hopefully apnar shob video dekhlen right so should i uh, run it again anyone no sir okay fine so what we actually cover in this video i'm just briefly show it to you again first of all uh, nuclear power plant uh, what are the components of nuclear power plant we need to know that right so you know the nuclear fuel is our uranium so the chain reaction process that means the fission reaction process uh, requires to uh, start the nuclear reaction by heating this uranium atom with a nucleus and then with a neutron and then uh, you need to split it up in two atoms and three another neutrons and those first neutrons will hit again another uranium uh, which is into the uh, uh, containment structure and then you are getting heavy amount of heat that heat is absorbed by the water you men they mention here the water is heavy water there are two types of water uh, heavy water and what we drink the normal water so then uh, you need to convert the heat uh, into the uh, uh, steam that means you need to boil the water produce the steam then a steam turbine can be operated and then you will get the electrical energy that is the main process so uh, this is our uh, structure you see there is a control room the containment structure danger sign shows that there are some nuclear uh, pellets available there and this is another uh, chimney that re rejects the uh, waste heat okay so this is the main structure of nuclear power plant so what is into that containment structure that is our main concern actually so you see this is a containment building and into that building uh, you see there are some uh, fuel rod that is enriched uranium and those uranium fuel rod you need to connect it together and make a pellet and that pellet uh, multiple of pellets can uh, bundle up or tight together and then you can make this type of fuel bundle and those fuel bundle uh, can be set into that containment structure okay so just like that so and then uh, you need to uh, add moderator on top of that uh, fuel pellet to control the overall nuclear fission process as you know the fission process if you can start the fission process uh, you cannot stop it right but you can control it with this moderator rod that control rod it can say so uh, by inserting the amount of uh, that control rod you can control the overall reaction we will uh, discuss on it later uh, this type of rod can be used so uh, then after heating the uranium pellate with uh, first neutron you can split up the atom uranium atom and you, you get enough heat energy and so that the containment structure should cover with water and that heavy water can receive that amount of heat and send uh, and and then it will it will heated heated up and then circulates to the another portion of the power plant to use that heat to uh, warm up or heat up the normal water to produce steam just heat exchange process should be there and you can uh, get the heat energy to produce steam and that steam can run the steam turbine so overall the turbine should be a steam turbine in a nuclear power plant but overall reactor type uh, could be different uh, for different types of nuclear power plant okay so based on the types of reactor the uh, it is said this is version 1 this is version 2 this is version 3 types of general uh, reactor okay so that is explained in this video i will share the link you can see the video again and uh, there is a 
additional uh, discussion on heavy water. So heavy water is not uh, uh, heavy water is found uh, on average one out of every seven thousand drops. Okay, so heavy water is not that much available. You need to produce it, and 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 obviously the pH level differs in heavy water rather than the water we actually consume. So in this uh, type of power plant, heavy water is required and to convert the heat. And the next process is produce steam. The steam will run the steam turbine and then it is connected to the generator to produce electricity. So that is the whole process which is explained here. So now uh, I'm going through different types of nuclear power plants the basic block diagrams and working principle. So we will cover at least mm, three nuclear power plants block diagram uh, for our uh, syllabus. Okay. So let's start. Today's lecture is lecture nine. So we will cover today the nuclear power plants. So what are the main parts of nuclear power plants? We need to know that. So if we have observed the video. So, so what are the main parts now? You can easily explain. Number one, we have seen their nuclear reactor, right? This is the main part. And then we need to exchange the heat, right? So that is required, heat exchanger. And we need a turbine to uh, utilize that steam, right? Which is produced in the reactor. So we need steam turbine. That is important. And obviously, we need generator. And also, to reuse the water, we need condensation system, condenser. So these are the typical main parts for uh, nuclear power plant. Okay, so, so what is nuclear reactor then? Nuclear reactor is a device uh, where you can initiate the chain reaction where you can control that chain reaction and if you can control it the sustained rate of reaction can occur and then you can get the sustained electrical output so nuclear reactor is a device it's a device where you can meet the reaction where you can control the reaction and where you can sustain the reaction, right? So that is our uh, nuclear reactor. So in that chain reaction, what is the chain reaction? This is the nuclear fission, right? Reaction, nuclear fission. So nuclear fission reaction is uh, occurred in nuclear reactor so what are the nuclear fuel then so there are so many uh, nuclear fuels available some are uh, man-made some are actually uh, uh, available into the uh, into our environment okay uh, you can 
get it from different sources so there are so many types of fuel among them uh, the main uh, fuel which is used is uranium 235 okay so we consider this is our primary fuel okay uranium 235 that is the main uh, primary fuel so there are so many isotopes available suppose uranium 238 okay uh, uranium 234 and uranium 235 also they are called isotopes okay it is it is it can be found so among them uranium 235 is most unstable isotope and you can utilize it as our primary fuel okay unstable and you can control it you can uh, control the chain reaction then you can get that heat energy and utilize that heat energy to produce electrical energy so what would be the uh, chain reaction looks like okay? suppose i'm just uh, show you a pictorial thing like you have one uranium 235 atom so you should heat it with a neutron okay you need to produce neutron separately and heat it by this neutron and the neutron may be a slow neutron okay and then that uranium 235 will produce two uh, atom again okay it will produce two atom and maybe uh, after splitting up into two atom it can release three another neutron but those neutrons will be fast neutrons okay they are fast neutrons those fast neutrons can again hit another uranium uh, atom but before that as this is first you cannot control the chain reaction then it will split again another 235 again another 235 and again three neutron again another 235 again three neutron that, that that's how the whole chain reaction uh, the rate of chain reaction will heavily increase and you cannot control the overall reaction and the overall amount of heat you cannot absorb it it will just increasing right and at the end of the reaction if you cannot control it it will uh, generate heavy amount of heat and maybe a damage can occur maybe a blast can occur right so you cannot it, you don't expect that uh, uh, uncontrolled scenario so that you need to control that's why there is something lies in between that production of first neutron uh, will not use to heat another uranium 235 again before make it a slow neutron okay so this structure this rod that is our control rod or we can say a moderator okay that moderator will help to slow down that neutron okay after that the slow neutron will hit again into the another uranium 235 atom uh, into that containment structure into that pellet okay so this is our slow neutron again so then you can control the rate of production of the heat production of the splitting uh, uranium 235 and production of the neutron and you can change the rate by using those moderator or control rod okay and then uranium 235 again split up and it will produce another three neutron and those neutron will be fast neutron then you need another moderator there right that's how the whole uh, reaction will continue so this is the main thing actually which is occurring into the nuclear reactor okay anyway so the nuclear reactor is just a device and just a vessel type thing so it requires heavy protection features so i'll show you one uh, just uh, figure of nuclear reactor uh, which you can see in this photo so this is our nuclear reactor okay 
So there are so many components of nuclear reactor. So you can see uh, into that nuclear reactor, uh, this is the main uh, structure, main cylindrical structure. There is a nuclear reactor core. You can see uh, there are so many fuel rods inserted into the main structure. This is our fuel rod. And around that fuel rod, there are moderators, OK? So, so it means it can slow down the neutron. So and outside of that moderator and fuel rod, there are thermal shielding. As you know, uh, it generates heavy amount of heat. And also, the reactive, uh, as it is reactive material, so maybe some of the rays, alpha, beta, or gamma rays, can be uh, released from uranium. So you need to protect that also. So you need another type of layer, which is called biological shield, so that no particle ray can release uh, from that nuclear reactor. So you need thermal shielding as well as biological shielding, two types of shielding you require. And the reactor control rod should be insert on from the top. So that control rod will reduce the generation of the neutron uh, so that overall reaction can be stopped if required okay so that is the main uh, main uh, components for nuclear reactor also you need cooling arrangement as you need to cool down the overall reactor uh, you need to flow water that's it this is the coolant uh, arrangement so these are the nuclear reactor components okay so let's see one picture of real uh, research level nuclear reactor. You see, this is the research level nuclear reactor. And uh, you can see some of the control rods are inserted and some of the control rods are not inserted into this reactor. So this is one arrangement. And each of the control rods actually uh, goes down, deep down to that uh nuclear reactor and there are moderator as well and also the fuel rods are there okay any questions so far any question Uh, then, uh, what is our moderator? Okay, we need to know about the moderator. I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is moderator? Uh, we see that if I just show you some uh, picture like here. So, this is our cylinder. And you see there, uh, suppose this is our fuel rod. And around that fuel rod, uh, we see there are some uh, material, which is called moderator. And some control rods are also inserted on top of the uh, reactor. So that moderator can be of different uh, materials. Like number one is graphite. It can just arrange. Uh, beside the fuel rod okay so this is our fuel rod this is uranium and beside it we can arrange that graphite to slow down the neutron okay so another type of um, moderator is heavy water or light water you can use water to slow down the neutron speed okay so based on heavy water and light water maybe their their uh, arrangement should be different so you can also use water as our moderator also sometimes beryllium br they uh, sorry this is not very br beryllium be should be so 
beryllium you can use um, also as moderator okay it, it helps to um, slow the first neutron so what is the purpose of moderator slow down the first neutron okay so uh, this is the main purpose to slow down the neutron speed so we can use graphite heavy water or light water or beryllium as moderator okay so these are the main thing of uh, moderator and nuclear reactor now uh, we can uh, go to the control rod so what would be the uh, control rod and what type of materials can be used into that control rod okay so in control rod uh, uh, it actually used to start and stop the maybe stop the whole reaction okay so suppose you have an emergency scenario you need to quickly shut down the overall power plant uh, moderator just slow down the neutron it cannot shut down the overall nuclear uh, nuclear reaction right but you need to shut down it so inside the whole rod the overall rod can absorb all the neutron the material can absorb all the neutron so that no neutrons will be available in the reactor the reactor reaction will will be stopped okay so that is the purpose of control rod this is another type of moderator but moderator only just slows down the neutron but it absorbs all the neutron that is the main difference between moderator and control rod so we can like uh, say like that it will absorb excess neutrons okay So absorbs excess neutrons and there are so many materials you can use to capture those neutrons like number one silver. Uh, you can use uh, maybe cadmium and indium. Okay. This type of material you can use to design the control rod. Okay. And there are so many other elements like uh, boron. You can uh, sometimes you can use cobalt as well. Okay, these are also used sometimes uh, to design uh, control rod. Okay, so there are two types of control rods. You see into the image that some of the control rods are inserted, some are not. So does it mean those controllers are using to halt the overall nuclear reaction? No. There are two types of nuclear rods, okay? Uh, nuclear control rods, two types, okay? Number one is, uh, we can say safety rod. And number two, which is called shim rod okay so you know during the operation during the running condition we need to only control the reaction rate suppose based on the demand you need to control the production of the uh, steam so the production of the steam can be controlled by heat production controlling so heat production controlling can be done by using the controlling the chain reaction so that moderator is a rate moderator is used in a fixed way so that the rate of the uh, speed of the uh, neutron can be controlled you are getting a steady output but you need to uh, half that output okay make the output into half so you need to insert some shim rod so that overall uh, fission reaction can be controlled so it is used to control the reaction okay only not to halt the whole reaction but the uh, safety rod it is used to halt the reaction okay halt the whole reaction that means 
it will shut down the overall reactor so safety rods are those rods that that is used to hold the reaction but the thing is if you just uh, uh, if you are trying to um, insert all the safety rods to shut down the overall nuclear power plant <clears throat> that is not a safe thing okay that is not uh, actually a good operation condition that is very very critical operation condition and if you just do that thing uh, rapidly uh, so quickly shut down the reactor then that is called scramming okay if you want to use the safety rod to hold the reaction quickly then it is called scramming okay it is called scramming anyway so this is the uh, discussion regarding the nuclear reactor material uh, components moderator control rod and uh, obviously the nuclear reactor so these are the main thing now uh, what are the types of nuclear reactors the main discussion so types of reactors how many types of reactors are there so we will cover two or three types of reactors in our lecture so uh, some of the reactors are very old fashioned which are obsolete and some are very new so the main reactors are based on uh, available availability and currently they are running so we can write down the name uh, some first of all pressurized water reactor PWR okay first one pressurized water reactor second boiling water reactor PWR those are very popular okay uh, number three first breeder reactor here breeder actually represents to uh, creating neutrons so if B R this this main types and also uh, Canadian research organization they design another type of uh, PWR pressurized water reactor but that pressurized water here is light water but if you use the heavy water the design can be changed so that is called pressurized heavy water reactor PHWR but as Canada uh, did the research they name it by their country name and sometimes they call can do Canadian uh, and du means deuterium that means heavy water okay the heavy water has a chemical name which is called uh, deuterium okay that is why Canada use the heavy water they name the reactor as Canadian heavy water that means heavy water means chemical name is deuterium can do okay so these are the main uh, types of reactors and we will cover at least a B and D and some old-fashioned uh, obsolete type of reactors are there some obsolete types you just need to know the name Uh, number one is Magnus. They are obsolete. They are not in use. They are not used. Also, gas cooled uh, reactor. Uh, 
those have design flaws okay and rbmk okay the russian so that is graphite based graphite moderated type reactor so as a moderator nowadays graphite is not uh, used so these are obsolete type and there are some other uh, types of reactors available based on generation and version suppose uh, if you use the Mm, pressurized water reactor or boiling water reactor uh, those have different generation and version uh, suppose vver2 vver3 okay uh, those are uh, technical name in our country we are using third generation plus version vver1200 each of the uh, plant has 1200 megawatt capacity and th those are actually generation version 3 3 plus okay Anyway, so these are the types of reactors and first we will cover pressurized water reactor. That means PWR. So let's start. So what are the main thing uh, pressurized water reactor um, has? So pressurized water reactor or PWR, uh, you need to remember you need some pressurizer to create pressurized atmosphere into the core. Oh. So that pressurizer actually pressurize the water into that core. So you know, uranium at is, as it is uh, uh, actually it has it is a reactive uh, material. So mm, for the safety purpose, uh, we need to uh, cautious about that water which is used to absorb the heat into that core we will not try to release that water into the outside atmosphere so that water should contain into that core we just use heat exchanger to grab the heat okay so that is the main uh, design objective or design uh, strategy for this pwr so if we just uh, try to draw the block diagram of that uh, PWR power plant. So first of all, you should have one nuclear core. So that is our reactor. So the, into that reactor, there should be fuel rod, right? So we can draw the fuel rod here. There are so many fuel rods. And also you need a uh, control rod here. So we can draw control rod. So these are our control rod and as moderator what should we use what can we use we can use in pwr as it is called pwr pressurized water water so as moderator we can use water into that core okay so to circulate that water into that system we can draw like that. This pipe, it is actually using to circulate the water into that core. Okay, this is a pump. So this is our uh, reactor vessel. This is our control rod. Uh, this is our fuel rod. And we are using the water into that pipe. So we need to pressurize that water. So that is our pressurizer. So pressurizer uh, is the thing. If you see the Pepsi or Coca-Cola uh, vending machine or vend not the vending machine the serving machine you know the pepsi or coca-cola uh, sometimes in kfc or different franchisee shops they uh, provide that pepsi or coca-cola from a machine right uh, where you can 
get some very fizzy Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Uh, what is the main objective of using that machine? They utilize that machine uh, and they the machine is connected with a carbon dioxide cylinder. That means that pressurized carbon dioxide is mixed with that Pepsi or Coca-Cola to make it more uh, gaseous or more fizzier, okay? So the, the, how, the more the gas inserted into that soda, it will more fizzier. It will uh, provide you very good taste. Or, you know, if you use the bottled Pepsi or Coca-Cola, if it is less fizzier, then the taste is different. You cannot get that amount of uh, taste from that Pepsi, right? So that type of thing. Uh, here, you need to add pressurize it to pressurize that water uh, in a certain level to uh, utilize it into that reactor core. And this water will act as moderator to slow down the neutron and also it will act as uh, absorbing material that means that water will absorb the heat so we can see this is our hot water okay it will absorb the heat and de definitely in pressurized uh, water reactor uh, we are using uh, very light water okay so this water is light water, okay? Light water as moderator. Now, in this area, now we are getting the um, heat. Now we need a heat exchanger. We need to exchange that heat. So what can we do? We can arrange one particular cylinder here, suppose, another cylinder is set up in this structure okay so this is our uh, steam generator okay how this pipe will emits the heat and if we have water here from that pipe the heat is absorbed by that water and that water will produce steam here. And after that, we can collect the heat from this steam generator, from this boiler, okay? And that steam can directly go to the turbine. We can use turbine. This is our turbine, okay? So we can produce electrical power from the generator. Okay. So the steam is coming here. And after that, it is cooled down. So it should be condensated. And then you can circulate it again uh, into that steam generator, right? So before that, you need to cool it down. So, so you need a cooling arrangement here. So you need some external cooling arrangement, a cooling tower maybe. You need a pump here. Right, so this water uh, after uh, the steam comes here, it is heated uh, hot steam, and then after running the turbine, it will release the heat, and again here, it will again release the heat and turns into water, and you can collect the water here, and again send it to the steam generator to produce the steam again. So that's how the cycle uh, rolls over. And the condenser will help you to cool down the uh, steam to make it water, okay? This is our condenser, uh, this is pump. So this is the main structure of PWR. You can see, uh, as I uh, draw here, uh, one red circle, 
on red uh, uh, cycle and another blue cycle so you can see this is our cycle one and this is our cycle two and the cycle one that is radiative right radiation can occur and the water is directly connected with the radiative material the fuel rod right the uranium so this water cannot be get released into our outside area so that we confine the whole water into that uh, reactor but we just use that heat to steam uh, to produce the steam so the steam cycle this is another cycle this cycle is not directly connected with the first cycle so that's why this is very safe to use in the turbine the generator and the plant engineers are pretty safe in the second cycle right that is the main advantage of pwr type of reactor as it is not directly connected and now if i just want to draw the pwr that is the main difference with the pwr that boiling water reactor does not have that level of safety they use the water directly into in producing the steam and producing the electricity so that has only one loop not like two loops as in pwr so if i draw the pwr structure how does it look boiling water reactor okay the same uh, into the confinement structure we have one reactor core and there should be fuel rods are there and then you should have control rod right why i am draw i'm drawing the control rod into the below side there is another explanation i will come into the point So you are getting steam from this part and then you should have the turbine then you are getting the water and you need a condenser to cool down the water same process as i have drawn previously there should have pump and the heat will exchange and you are getting water again and you can pump it again to the reactor So this is our reactor vessel, no pressurizer is used as it is not PWR, this is a fuel rod and this is our control rod and this is production of steam, you are using that steam to run the turbine and the turbine here condenser is used to get the water again now water is pumped towards the reactor core again so that is the main thing and you are getting output from the generator so you see there is only one loop for that water to circulate only one loop only single loop so the water should be uh, 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 ordinary water maybe in the boiling water in pressurized water you can use heavy water or light water whatever you want and the water uh, is used as moderator also the absorbent of the uh, heat right so uh, and to use the control rod if you want to use the control rod from the top you can also use it 
but uh, there's some issues like uh, control load uh, sometimes if you don't have the control during an emergency scenario suppose you have controllers on top right those controllers are inserted into the reactor by using motor somehow your motor is jammed okay uh, sometimes uh, there will be a power loss you cannot run the motor so in that scenario sometimes it will create accident accidentally maybe the you don't want to insert the controller but controller may fall down into the reactor that's why sometimes controllers are inserting uh, in from the below so you ensure like you are not inserting the control rod uh, uh, by failing of the motor okay if it is on top motor failure can directly insert the rod into that uh, core but you don't want it so that's why for that reason sometimes control rods are arranged from the below side so that motor jamming or motor issues uh, cannot insert the rod directly into the core rather you need another measures to insert those rods into the core okay so that is the main uh, issue uh, using the controllers from the below side in BWR so I hope uh, you understand the difference between PWR and BWR type of reactor I'll provide you the slide where you can find the advantages and disadvantages of this PWR and BWR you can cover those parts from that slide now the final one is Canadian reactor can do so what is the design uh, differences of can do we can draw it very easily this is the last topic of today's class so the can do means Canada deuterium reactor so that is called can do okay so uh, main elements are there should have nuclear reactor and those reactors are loaded uh, with fuel rods and there should have some horizontal arrangement of pipes which flows the water and their uh, moderator is heavy water so you need to connect it with another pipe you're getting the uh, water from here and it is coming from here so you need to circulate it and also the for the safety measures there should have two cycle okay this is the vessel where you can circulate the whole water the hot water so this is our reactor and water flows and into this chamber it exchange the heat and produce steam so steam generator and you see it is used deuterium so water 
into those pipe those are heavy water so that is the main difference and nothing is different from the pwr it is similar to the pwr but the arrangements of these fuel rods are different you can change those fuel rods uh, very easily so for mechanical design uh, they have fuel load machine and they can easily change the fuel rod if their half life uh, ends okay they can just very easily change those fuel you don't need to uh, open up the whole reactor then so uh, they have some arrangements like that so then again you are getting the steam you need a steam turbine That is your steam turbine. And from that turbine, you can run the generator. And then you are getting the water. You need a condenser to cool it down, right? From the outside source, you flows the water, maybe from the river or wherever. And then the steam releases the heat it turns into water and then again you can use the water into that steam generator so water flows to the steam generator again so we have water and these are our steam so you see there are two cycle again number one and number Two. So your main uh, confinement structure is it is our confinement structure, the dome shaped structure. Into that we have our reactor, reactor fuel, and also the moderator. That means heavy water. So heavy water is our moderator here. That is our moderator. Okay, this is our reactor. We can use the fuel rod. Okay, into that nuclear reactor and through that we can just uh, these are our fuel rod the red one and through that fuel rod you are passing the water okay and reactor starts the reaction heavy water flows from here and through that pilot or the fuel rod and receives the heat and again flows to that uh, steam generator and release the heat into that water of uh, which is in already into the steam generator and produces steam that steam flows through the pipe runs the turbine cools down again utilizes so there are two different cycle of water okay so that is canadian deuterium reactor the only difference is in pressurized water we are using light water and in this we are using heavy water and the arrangements are pretty different than the PWR okay so the that's all for today's lecture uh, if you have any question you can ask me and I'm just briefly go through the lecture again in today's lecture we covered the nuclear power plants one video uh, where we can found uh, that um, there are main parts nuclear reactor has which is reactor heat exchanger steam turbine generator condenser you need these five elements in a block diagram so nuclear fission reaction use different fuel where uranium-235 is our primary fuel so it releases to different atoms and three neutrons fast neutrons and you can slow down by using moderator or control rod but moderator is slightly different than control rod moderators can be heavy water light water they are very poor graphite is very old to slow down the neutron and control rod also slows down the neutron it can absorb the excess neutron but it is used for two different purposes one is safety which halt the reaction another is shim rod which can control the rate of reaction for electricity production and if you quickly shut down the reaction that is called scramming there are different types of reactors in this lecture we'll cover three 
which is PWR, BWR, and can do. And there are some obsolete uh, types of uh, reactors also. And based on generation, those reactors are updated in version 2, 3, 4. So many versions are there. And PWR is using light water, pressurized water, and also it has two different water cycle. One is for reactor to absorb the heat, and then it releases the heat into the another cycle, and then steam produces. You can run the turbine. And PWR is related to the CANDU, but the CANDU has the arrangement of horizontal structure. It can very easily change the fuel rod into the core, and it has fuel loading machine. Also, it is using not the light water, but using heavy water as moderator. That is the main difference than PWR. And it has also two cycles of water. But the BWR is not that much safe. It is directly using the water, uh, which absorbs the radioactive uh, active activity from the material. And the water should be radioactive water. And that is used directly into the turbine. So it is not safe for the people who are actually working uh, in this condition. That's all from my side. If you have any question, you can ask me. Thank you so much. Any question? No, sir. No question. OK, fine. So attendance, please. Uh, Tahmidur Rahman. Present, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, Tahmidur Rahman Tanvir present. Fahim Abrar. Yes, sir. Nafiul Islam Utsho. Present, sir. Farabi. Bahmudur. Shoeb Ahmed Shafi. Uh, Asir Intisar. Jakir Hussain. Present, sir. Asif Ahmed. Present, sir. Jubair Alum. HM Jubair Alum. Uh, Muslim Ahok. Present, sir. Iman Chaudhuri. Present, sir. Orun. Present, sir. Alamin. Present, sir. Labib. Sir, present, sir. Sir, I'm at the microphone. I'm at the microphone. Okay. Okay. Toshik. Yes, sir. Min Moy. Ovijit. Present, sir. Safwan. Yes, sir. Sadiq. 